On today's episode, we have arguably the fastest swimmer in triathlon history, Richard Varga, two-time Olympian, three-time Aquathon world champion, and Brownlee fitness consultant. Appropriately, our conversation centers around speed or how to swim faster. I hope you enjoy this really insightful episode. Also, exclusively for our community of listeners, Richard offers one-to-one video consult. If you'd like the world's best to analyze your swim technique, find the link in our bio. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I know it's uh, in the evening there, but a busy day training. Uh, but it, really, you need no introduction. You are history's fastest swimmer in triathlon. And it's great to have you on the podcast talking about how we can help our listeners and viewers swim faster. So um, it'd be amazing to it just, you know, you share your, your knowledge and your wisdom. Some really sort of hot tips and tricks, the sort of things that you've done throughout your career that makes you such a, you know, a blisteringly fast swimmer. That'd be great to, to hear, you know, your thoughts on that. Thank you, PT, for uh, invitation. I can join the, the Brownlee Fitness podcast. I, I heard you with the book also. I'm excited to talk to you. It's great to have you here. We really do appreciate you taking the time. So thank, thanks again. So, yeah, I my view coming from uh, uh, from my, as you said, from the experience that people always say, ask me like, or you have to be so gifted and talented, you 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 swimming so fast. But yeah, I I I maybe I was a little bit gifted because my mother was a swimmer, so maybe the the swimming was quite close to me. But but I grow up close to the pool and close to the water, and as my older brother was swimming. And yeah, I did lots of trainings. Everything people see, that's 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 just uh, ice of the berg. I did lots of lots of hard work when I was um, junior and an early age, and 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 actually now I'm I'm floating on on that way that I did so much so much training, and now I can focusing uh, more on the swimming and running. And right. yeah, the prob the problem with the swimming compared to two other sports with uh, cycling and running, that 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 um, that uh, effort or the intensity you're doing or your training is not transferred as much uh, into improvement into improvement of your performance as uh, like is not improving that much like swimming like the cycling and running is ob- is obvious because it's more technical sport and the propulsion of the water is is that's what the pay like it, it is makes the major major role and what is the most important to uh, not only working hard but working hard in a way that that you you making propulsion of the water so you have some cage and then you 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 doing as less as possible to the resistance is actually with the resistance is close like on on your uh, tt bike or, or or like on the road bike so you you want to have as as least as possible the resistance but right. the propulsion is is a little bit different because the the pedals it's always under your 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 legs but but the proportion of the water can change it can change uh with the with the waves it can change uh the uh how you operate how what's your angle of the of your arm and shoulder which on the bike is fixed it's always the same way so okay yes. you can you can change your technique. It's, it's biomechanics how you how you transfer the, the force, but with the swimming, it's a major factor how how you actually push the water, how you accelerate through the stroke, and and the timing, how you breathe, and how you kicking. 
So the as from the start, as I started to uh, talking. Yes, if, but on, on yeah yes, on on, on that on on that, on on that note, Richard, I um, you're absolutely right. Uh, this week I've swum in the sea almost every day, getting ready for Ibiza this weekend, where we are together at the Aquathon. Um, and this uh, one, uh, one day the water is flat. The next day it's wavy. The next day the tide is super strong. Um, and I would love to, as you say, get your insights into how you can consistently swim at speed with different conditions. I mean, it's very um, irregular, particularly the sea. You never know what you're going to be faced with on race day or even when training like I've been this week training. So you're absolutely right. Uh, arm position, breathing, it, it, everything changes when the conditions change. But the, the one thing that we triathletes want to do all the time is swim faster. We just want to be you know, in that front group. There's a lot of advantage to coming out of that swim in the front pack so that you can be there in the, in, in, in the, in the bike segment. Yes, you you are absolutely right with the uh, how how the waves are changing, and that actually gives me like a good uh, good advice or or some finding what I found that like uh, when you when you have big waves, uh, usually the the more water when you are top, you you. Uh, Yes, you you have more water, so it's more density, so you can actually use more uh, more power into the stroke. But if there right. is a, if you're going down, uh, there is no so much water, and you're losing ground. Can you can sometimes feel it? So that's time when you when you just float. So you you all also have to change how you how the perception of the of how much power you're pushing in the stroke. Wow. So this is a li little bit like, yeah, if you do, you want to do it correct way, you, you need to really have a good sense of the feeling, um, for the water and, right. yeah, and have timing with the, how, how, when you need to push strong and when you need to go easy It's, it's similar. Like, again, I will, I will say like a cycling up the hill is easier to push. And that's where you gain some time. And on the downhill, even you would push lots of watts compared to person who would push less or or not pushing at all. Downhill, you just you just riding the, the downhill, right? It's not a big difference of the of the speed, but the, the difference of the energy cost is much higher. And you want to Absolutely. be as much as, as as efficiently with the time, but also with your with your energy cost and with your how much you power putting. So yeah, it's not only just pushing all the way through. Okay, um, great tips there for wavy water. But there's one question that has been coming out throughout the squad. So our squad here at Brandy Fitness knew we were talking tonight, and there's one question that 80% of the people asked me to ask you. How do you yes. swim so fast? How, how do you swim so fast? What do you, what do you put, what, what are the basic things that you think you do without giving too much away to your competition, but what is it that you do that, that makes you swim so efficiently, so quickly? Yeah, so... So I, I don't think I am like the best looking uh, technique wise swimmer, but um, like Brownlee's does, I think I also really uh, concentrate on the fu uh, fundamentals. So really basics, like in the technique and, and I'll just drill it over, 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 over again and just till perfection. What is it is I always, I'm a little bit guy like looking a little bit for physics. And okay. Again, you want to do like have be as high as possible, you know. That's that's mean. You you 
create less uh, resistance because deeper you go, the the pressure of the water is hot is is much denser, right? It's higher. So if you are on the like, why the boat is is, is fastest when they are on really high on the water? That's that's how I always imagine myself to be as high as possible. Right. So right. and how you how you and the question is how you you create that and you need to have a strong core to be airstream position as possible so really tight with your with your shoulders uh have a little bit activated glutes so your butt because there is lots of the center of gravity is around your hips right so if if it's lower down again is is some some resistance and that's that is wow. that is the one thing how you creating and also how wide you are also right when you bite with your stroke that's not so good there, there is lo is lots of surface around there right yes so yeah and i i develop really naturally really but uh, I have quite deep, deep stroke. So is I have quite strong, uh, no strong, uh, straight arm, which is not really what is um, book wise swimming. It should be like about 190 degrees when you look like this between forearm and and the arm. Yes, but I, I somehow develop that. I have really a little bit straighter, which I don't want to recommend anyone, but it allows me to to go a little bit like deeper in the water and have a little bit stronger uh, stroke. And that was really naturally, I, I didn't like really think about that. And yeah, so this is this is how, first thing, how you, uh, the, the, the position of the, of the body, and the second is the propulsion. I we always do like a single arms drills and just repeat it right. like for twenty years. And really? there is lots of benefits of that. Uh, you can actually concentrate in this drill for at least five, six things, you know. And you can always speak in your head what you're gonna improve. Again, head position, like if you over rotating or if you are in a, in a one eye out one eye in so that's one thing you can always uh, think about and and just focus on that uh, other thing is if it's your head too forward when it's too forward your your hips going down right wow. so you want to yeah. have head nice if you if you're in the line you don't want to be like that. You want to be nice and high, right? Because this is the first surface area. Head is the first surface area is gonna water is gonna hit. So yeah, if if you if you pull the water uh, head down, it's it's water is going around that, and you want to be like like high. You want to be high with your head as well. I'm, I'm a, smiling. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling. I'm smiling, Richard, because everything you're describing <laughs> is, That's what is you my. Do. <laughs> yeah, I think this is kind of um, it's great to get these tips. Uh, as soon as I finish this call, I don't. I'm going in the gym to work on my core. <laughs> <laughs> get a strong course. core. Get high in the water. Head position. Uh, my yes. my critical swim speed there is around. Uh, about 143 to 144 yeah and nothing yeah. and, and it's, brilliant, it's brilliant listening to you uh and we'll talk about the one-to-one -one consult service you offer because i'm having a bit of that now but um that single arm work that you talk about i it makes so much sense because you you need to be strong it sounds like that i think that a lot of people listening to this won't be doing is strength related stuff to swimming yeah, even in the drills that you've described, you're, there's there's a certain amount of not just technique but strength work. As you say, the ability to propel yourself through the water efficiently, strongly, um, irrespective of conditions, uh, seems to be you know something that uh, is really resonated with me there. So um, yes, you were saying high body, keeping a high body in the water. That will definitely be going through my mind as I swim now. Head position. Yeah. 
um, head, and posi then, yeah. head position. And then is the also the timing. So the timing of the briefing and also can really influence how you how you do, do the catch, how you think if you're over rotating or not, because you you want to rotate because that's also like if you if you flat that's also lots of resistance yes. right but but also other thing is that biomechanically that you can actually if you pushing if you would make uh, somebody put you here some like like a meter where you can um, measure the power you can do it with your arm you would find it's not so much compared to if you if you rotate in and use whole body uh, posture, and so you can and in a swimming you you using like latissimus dorsi, your core, your transversus abdominis, your glutes. So if you're doing this compared to whole body strength, you you're gonna create much more energy like power or force. And also for less like a cost, because if you keep doing this, you're gonna get tired really soon because it's really small mass group compared to whole body, right? And that's what you yeah. want. You want to split that that energy into the more mass of fibers. Unbelievable. Uh, once again, describing. I'm very strong on the left. I rotate beautifully on the left. What I'm very limited rotation on the right. And I think this is quite yes. common, this ability of, of being dominant one side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, but, but of course, I everybody has one dominant side and other one. And what we are trying always to do to to little bit balance it is never going to like, I don't know anyone who is going to be 50 50. Like that's 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 crazy. Right. Like. But we we always want to try to be close as possible. Like the same on the bike, I compare with the cycling. If you have the parameter on the pedals, okay, nobody is 50-50, but at least be 48, 52, or 49, 51, not 45 and 55, right? Because that's gonna create like some issue with your back and, yes. and it's, it's not good, right? And that's why in the training you want to breathe on, on on one side, also on an, another side. Even on the race, you're gonna probably choosing more dominant side. Yes, I am. It's a very interesting point, your view on that. I definitely swim uh, left one side to get the oxygen in. Um, and it would be good to talk to you briefly about breathing. Uh, what is your perspective on, on effective breathing uh, in, in swimming? Yes, yeah, so so I am I'm like a fan, or I don't know how how would I say it, that that I I breathing on every second on a stroke. So yeah, every second yeah. stroke. I know lots of people do every three or every even four, but for me, from my point of view and from a physiological point of view, if you're doing endurance sport, you want that oxygen. That's your energy where it's coming yeah. from. Uh, so you won't have as much oxygen as possible. And, and if you are breathing maybe every three, every four, maybe your cadence is just too high to because you're rushing to get that air, you know? And it's too long. It's too long to, to wait for every four. It might be a little bit quicker, but not... The, the triathlon is endurance sport. It's, it's going to cause... It will, it will take so much time. Yes. So, if, for example, if you look for the 100-meter swimmers, they might breathe, I don't know, for 50 meters, for five times, six times. Even they breathe quite a lot. But when you look 400-meter swimmers, they already swim two, three times, uh, every second, every third stroke, because it's already known that that is more efficient way to to use in uh, this this stroke. And another thing you you ask me because of this, uh, what I do, I do every twenty five meters on one side. 
So 25 meters, I swim on right side. And then 25 meters back, I swim on the left side. Right. Very so, interesting. Yeah. So I actually swim on both sides, but always briefing to see one side of the wall <laughs> on the training. Very good. That's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. But then I, I see the, the watch, the clocks all the time. Yes, you see the clocks, but also the balance, because today uh, you'd have seen on my Strava, I went out in a very choppy sea swim and I am I am left dominant. So I, I'm very happy breathing on my left, but yet the waves were coming in on yes. the left. So it's very unnatural for me to start breathing right. Yeah, so yeah. that was a great, I mean, so I have to be able to adapt, but I, I basically swam that, I swam just going left, you know, just trying to time the waves to breathe as opposed to having the skill to go yes, right. Yes. yes, and this with this also comes problem that 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 uh, that side where you're breathing, it's you're gonna push more to that side, kind of. Yes, you know what I mean. I do. Like if you breathing left, you will you will go naturally more a little bit left, right? Another thing there is sighting. How often do you? in open water how often do you sight yeah this is a good question it really depends of how much i am confident uh, where i see the direction because if i'm not confident i have to because waves coming in and i i didn't spot really good uh, the buoy because sometimes you you have the the sun going into your eyes and you don't really see and the buoy is maybe small or has a like a funny color yeah it's uh, sometimes it's uh, crazy that i can't see the buoy and i have to lead up everyone like why did you swim so <laughs> so bad and i said like why do you follow me you, you just go you just go everyone is complaining how i swim but but no one wants to look for the boy. It's not so easy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I if I am confident when I spot on the water is flat, I maybe do like um, like five six double strokes and then then look and then go again. And what I do is that that with my um, when I do briefing, uh, briefing straw arm, I I push, I push up. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. With my, and then and then I I continue with my to the side. So I don't stop and do strokes, but I do it with the stroke. Amazing! That, yes. That's because, I mean. And maybe yeah. I do it like first time, I measure with my eyes like where about is the we raise the buoy and i'm doing the second time to make sure that i found the correct buoy right very good because Amazing. because sometimes there is more more buoys and you can you can thought that you're going that uh, the correct uh, buoy but it's different one <laughs> so you yeah. the first one is about like where about i am and the second one is about, okay, I correct myself. I'm going the right direction. And then I do again, like five, uh, two strokes. And then I breathe again. Brilliant. Um, I'm conscious of, of time and it, it's late in the evening where you are. I just wanted to ask you, uh, if somebody, we, we have a, quite a growing beginner squad. So uh, people that are brand new to triathlon. Uh, what advice would you give somebody new into triathlon, just starting out, as with all our squads, super enthusiastic, highly energetic, you know, love the training. What what advice would you give to someone to just starting out? On, and yeah. specifically, women? I I keep the same philosophy as uh, Brownlee's because we're in Brownlee squad uh have fun enjoy you know you you creating such a such a good environment and and people around you can support each other 
where you where you have fun and this is i think the 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 main goal and principle that that people should have of course they choose to do triathlon because probably they will they could do anything in other sports but triathlon i think is keeps you healthy i think keeps you good mentally because support you like with your life like have good discipline um and give you gives you goals i think it gives you for normal people it gives you learn you some new skills yeah triathlon uh, triathlon uh show you so yeah just enjoy and take some some goals and see the world because i think it's also great i know lots of age groupers who start to do triathlon and by this sport they they found themselves and they learn and travel to the world and yeah it's an incredible sport and go for it yeah thank you no great 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 words and uh fun definitely springs to mind there's always something to learn uh and, and yeah, with- send me please send me your video I will, I will i will tell you what you should do <laughs> right now that that comes on nicely because uh it's worth letting our audience know that the, that the people can actually with the use of modern technology that we have here at brandy fitness we can actually video uh the the person swimming and then send it to you for analysis and this is part of our one-to-one consult um service but Yes, I'm going in definitely to have that done uh, in the endless pool. Uh, and then it's really simple. We just video you either in open water. We've got those techniques that you can send through uh, and that we do have this service. So I think that would be um, very interesting to uh, the people that listen to this or watching this is that you can actually get your eyes. And how, how would that work, Richard? So they'd send you the video. Just explain how you would just very quickly... Uh, Kind of guide people. Yes, so you would send me a video where you would, um, from outside, how you swimming, from the side and from the in the water, and then from the front. And you will send me the video. I will analyze it. We will schedule the meeting. We will do meeting, and I will go from point to point where where you do mistakes, what you doing good, what did you what you doing right. You can ask questions. And then I would give you uh, my recommendation how to how to step by step uh, to improve that that uh, the wrong technique, and we would do it for a few weeks, uh, improving one way. And then if we you can send me the video again, uh, if you improve your 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 bad uh, habit on your swim technique, and then we'll go another. F- uh, next to the other step to the another technique to the next uh, bad habit so we will maybe because it's not all, always only one one thing uh, to to improve there is two usually three which which we can work on so we will do it slowly step by step because I know if if we do everything together it's the the improvement will not come. It needs to be really focused uh, on the on the technique and on improvement. Fantastic. Well, I am going to be in that process fairly shortly. My critical swim speed needs to be around one thirty four. We need to sh- and the easier <laughs> said than done, knocking ten seconds off. But I know we can do it. Um, and then finally, uh, it's a it's a closing tradition here to ask this question of our guest. Um, and that is either either past or present, someone that has been here on earth before or who is here now, who would you most like to meet and why would you like to meet them? What would you ask them? Oh, yeah, I would ask Marcus Aurelius how to meditate. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Stoic <laughs> philosophy. What are the greatest... Stoic. The greatest yes. Stoic philosopher, really. How to meditate? Yes. Yeah, yeah. How to how to live this world without losing the mind? <laughs> it uh, is an incredible skill. I uh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Well, he's a be a fantastic person to me. I think that's a great answer. Yeah, that, Richard, it's a brilliant answer. 
Yeah, meditation. Although I find swimming hugely meditative. It's the breathing it is. and it the is. motion. I, yes, yes. It, and if it, there is no distraction, like compared to swimming, yes, or, or bike and run, sorry, because you have to be by yourself, no one's around, no one to talk to you, no cell phones, no nothing distraction, no cars, no one to distract you. So I think it's, it's really good mental, like, I think for people it's really important in those days. You're absolutely right. And in fact, you've, you've summarized swimming brilliantly there. And I think that's why I enjoy it so much. If, if I had to do one of the three sports, if someone said you've just got to pick one, for that reason alone, that the solitude of swimming, the disconnection from this hyper-connected world, uh, it's just you, the water, your breathing. Yeah, that's a brilliant answer. And it contextualizes why I love the swimming so much. It's, it's more mental than it is physical. Correct, correct. Richard, thank you so much. I, uh, I do really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me tonight. We will put a link in below in the show on that one-to-one -one consults. If, if people uh, would like to reach out, they can do that through Brandly Fitness to work with you. And I'm sure we'll have you on in future episodes and can't wait to meet up with you on Monday in Ibiza where... Uh, your, I'm sure your swim time will be astonishingly faster than mine, but at least we're both doing the world aquathons together. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to see you there and have a good time. Great yeah, stuff. Thank you for having me. No yeah. problem. Thank you so much for, for, for your time. Thanks again. Have a good night. Thanks for listening to the show. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get instantly notified of new episodes. And we have an exciting lineup of guests planned, all brought to you to help you with your triathlon journey.